Hi guys, welcome to another one of RT Dollar Lectures and today we'll be focusing specifically on the turn method of heat transfer which is radiation. Now in my past two videos I spoke about conduction as well as convection and looking back at those two specific types we were looking at one occurring most efficiently in a solid which is conduction and the other method occurring most efficiently through a fluid because it's the movement of the particles itself that generates convection currents which circulates the heat now let's look at the third method which is radiation and by definition it is the transfer again of heat energy from a region of higher to lower temperature by means of electromagnetic waves. So EM waves or electromagnetic waves can occur through a vacuum. So they do not need a medium in order to transfer that heat energy. So the main characteristic of radiation is that it does not need a medium to transfer energy. And if you think of a basic example as the sun's energy, the sun is so many light years away from the surface of the earth. So what you will consider is how hot our earth's surface really is. And even though we are so far apart, we are still able to experience the sun's energy and that is primarily because of electromagnetic waves which is a means of transporting energy from the sun so i had some videos you can click on it to determine what a wave is and i specifically explained what electromagnetic waves are so in so doing when we look at radiation here one of the main things we look at are looking at the nature of a surface so radiation occurs most frequently and effectively from dull black surfaces. And you will find that these dull black surfaces are always good absorbers and good emitters so what you will find here is that radiation is most effective if your surface is dull and black that being said if you have a shiny white surface then that is a poor absorber and hence poor emitter but it is a good reflector of that heat energy. And why am I talking about this? Because radiation, yes, it is a transfer of heat energy. And if your surface is color, it's, well, it's black or it's shiny, it will determine the extent to which that radiation effect will occur. So you will normally find that the color of a surface and the nature of a surface makes it effective in transferring heat. And many times the way that questions are brought in an examination is they will ask you, okay, so let's say I have a plate and on one side I paint it black and on the other side of the plate it's shiny, right? And using a coin, using wax, I attach coins on either side of this plate. And you would want to know if, let's say, heat energy from the sun is incident on this plate, which coin will drop off the surface of the plate first? And that will be from the black surface. Because the black surface would absorb and re-emit back that energy. And therefore, it melts the wax, causing your coin to fall. Now, another example linked to radiation is the greenhouse effect. And this is something that's pretty popular because it's linked to global warming.
Now, the greenhouse effect speaks about short wavelength. And again, all of these are linked to my video on waves. Short wavelength radiation from the sun, which becomes incident on a glass house. Because that is what the greenhouse is. It's a glass house that has plants in it. That's where the effect comes from. So you will find that this is absorbed by the plants and bodies within the glass and it's re-emitted as long wavelengths of radiation. And the trick is the long wavelengths cannot penetrate or cannot re-penetrate the glass so it remains trapped trapped quote-unquote in the greenhouse and this is much like global warming where you would have the surface of the earth here and you would have the sun so you have short wavelengths being emitted and then you have it being absorbed and re-emitted from the earth as long wavelengths. Now there is a layer of what we call greenhouse gases here and the purpose of these greenhouse gases is to trap the heat because the long wavelength would not be able to penetrate that layer of things like carbon dioxide carbon monoxide methane all of these popular greenhouse gases so the layer of air above the earth's surface will experience that heat energy that is trapped and it will therefore raise the temperature now another thing that's related to radiation is the vacuum flask So the diagram I drew here shows a vacuum flask and the vacuum flask is important because it indicates an instrument that reduces heat loss through all of the methods of conduction, convection and radiation. And if we think about convection, it is the escape of heat through the movement of the fluid. So here, if we have our cork stopper, right, it's used to lock the container off from the outside you are reducing heat loss through convection now the vacuum flask keeps hot things hot and cold things cold and it does that by having an inner container fitted within an outer container so the inner container is where you would keep your liquid right and the purpose of it is that it is not physically touching the outer container so that reduces heat loss through conduction now, in between the inner and the outer container is where you have uh, a, um, sorry, a vacuum. You do not have a, right? So, you will find now that if you have a vacuum where you don't have any air, it means that you are reducing heat loss by convection. So, to recap, the inner and the outer container are not touching. So, therefore, you will reduce heat loss by conduction. Next, you do not have any air present therefore a vacuum so you will find that you reduce heat loss through convection the walls are silvered so they reflect heat so therefore you don't absorb any and you would reduce heat loss through radiation